Just a quick video on uh, disassembling a DSi 93 LE transmission. This one's out of a BF Ford, 4 speed automatic. Bell housing bolts are 12 mil. And now we're going to take the pan off. These are all 10 mil. And also on the extension housing over here, they're 12 mil as well. You got to get that one off with the spanner, possibly that one with the spanner, but the two top ones you can get off with the rattle gun. Now to get all these little connectors off the solenoids, I have this little tool and I just pry that little uh, locking bracket off and then I can just pull it off without breaking them. Pressure control solenoid, or the S5. Okay, looms off. We could just put that out of the way. And now what I'm going to do, a lot of people will get a tick gun to undo these. We'll actually strip these inside hexes on these. And these are all T30s. This one here, you need to just move that selector out of the way like I am. Because there's one underneath it there. You just can't see it from the camera there. But there's one under there. And the rest are all the same. Except for that one there. I'm not going to bother with that. And basically, you can't mix them up. You've got one, two long ones here. A long one there, just a bit to the side of the middle and the two long ones over here there and there at the rear now they're all loose i can undo it with the tech gun Now these also have a little, what's called a Z-link, and you just make a note that the bit with the little stopper on it goes into the valve, and that just pushes into there. Now we can take out that loom. You'll have to loosen these bolts here on, on the parking selector. And the way you take that off is you just press those little tangs in there and that'll push in it goes in that way to come out to get the inhibitor switch off you need a little clamp there to clamp you, you can use a little clamp and a socket just so that pin's got somewhere to go when you're clamping it in take that off good idea to as a reference point to measure the end float and you can either do that by pushing on the output shaft and on the input shaft and measure from here to the stator shaft. Stator shaft is actually locked on the on the pump there on that part of it so it's solid basically it's bolted to the case. The input shaft is the one that's driven by the torque converter. That's actually the thing that creates all the movement through through the transmission. In here we've got the pump drive, the smaller gear in the pump, that one drives the outer gear. So good idea to always measure the end float just as a reference point. If you're doing this in the car, this is the point where you do an air pressure test on it. C2, C4, just be careful not to put full 
pressure on the C4 clutch. That's a little, the smaller clutch in there. You got your C3 clutch and your C1 clutch up here. Then you've got um, the outer, the outer seal applying that servo, the smaller seal, and the same on the. Oh, you've got the the outer seal on the rear band, and the inner seal. Just want to make sure there's no air leak sounds when you're testing them. And also, what you can do is you can readjust these bands. There are shims on these. You've got to remove the valve body to adjust the. You see it there. You just slide that off. There, they have selective shims that tuck in there and measure the end float or how much movement it is. Um, and I think I like to always put them at about three mil, three mil stroke. While you've got it out like that, you can see where how far the piston travels and get it to that and over here you can get it on that or measure it on that arm you can wash that off with a bit of solvent put a little texture mark apply your air pressure in here and just see how much movement there is to lock it up these here are 240s these are 240s you can pop that right off if you choose to, just this, I like to leave it on loose, just so that linkage doesn't flop around as you're rotating the case around. And also just make sure you put it under, in the right spot, not under there, when you're putting it back together. I'm just pushing those little tangs on that loom plug, just so it can be pushed through, one side and then the other. And that just taps through like that. There we go. Pop that all off. And you won't be able to remove it because you've got a wire that goes to the torque converter clutch solenoid, which is on the pump. So I'll just put all this back. Now here we can see the O-ring for the torque converter clutch, and that one has flattened right out. I always like to take that off because it'll just make removing the pump a little bit easier. This one's flattened right out. And these go hard and flatten out and then you can't get, you get a pressure leak in, in the torque converter there. All the pump bolts, they're all eight mil. Now to get these off, there is a tool you can get that pushes in here and you just clamp it and it just pries it out. But what you can do, if you support the bottom end of the stator shaft, which is the, the wider shaft there, and also with a pulling action with your hand, you can get a soft hammer and just give it a bit of a tap. And there we go. It'll dislodge that. There's an O-ring that holds it and sometimes the, sometimes the gasket gets stuck on there, but Quite often it'll just come out quite easily there. Now before I pull all that apart, I'll just loosen this valve body. If I flip, flip those over, while it's all together, I'll just loosen all these brackets there that hold the solenoids in. And then I'll flip it over and just loosen all the bolts on the other side. Tight. So going to just pull that pump apart just so it can drain. Make sure you've got a good quality Torx socket. If you end up stripping that one in there that holds that torque converter clutch solenoid in, you're going to be in trouble. And these are all 8 mil. Uh, before we take that off, 
just take that cover off. That's got a gasket on it that seals everything. And there's a there's a check ball in there with a spring pushing down. So I just make a note of that. You can check the for any wear there on that aluminium or alloy part. And we'll also go through these regulator valves. There's one, two, three valves on the pump. The pump gears, especially on these DSI transmissions, I think they're only about 16 mil wide. And quite often, because it's got these little lugs on the pump drive gear, not not the little slots like in the older models and what happens the torque converter actually sort of as it flexes on the drive plate or flex plate it'll wear out the housing in the pump there doesn't always happen but quite often it does happen and it'll probably always wear out in that spot there this one actually looks good, so I'm quite surprised. Okay, now we can start disassembling the transmission. To get the loom out, this little wire here that I left before, what you do is you just pull it out towards the pump, and it just comes out through there, it just locates in a little slot in there, and you pull it back through into the case whole looms out now. Now I just grab this here and we just pull out that whole drum and this one's got the the C1, C2 and C4 clutch in it. One's on one side and two are on the other. We just pull that out side and then we can grab this sun gear and pull out the C3 clutch and this one's for reverse it's a pull put shaft it's just stuck on those splines a little bit there we go And you can see those clutches are thoroughly burnt. Oh, we got metal, metal to metal on that one. That should be a friction clutch plate. The ones with the teeth on the inside, they're the friction ones. It won't come off there. You can see that's the lining on it and that one should have that one's completely burnt as well it's flaking off and the steel ones they're damaged as well that one's actually chewed in over here and that one had metal to metal contact that's your c1 clutch 